What'd you make of this Jericho angle with Mike Tyson? I mean, it was, you know, I don't think that it, like, as, like, an executed angle, it was, like, a classic angle or anything like that. I mean, it was, you know, if, if I would look at it like I would look at an angle, it was kind of, like, uh, not great, but it's Mike Tyson, and it doesn't matter if it's great or not. It matters how much publicity it gets and how much attention it gets and, uh, you know, I mean, it's done for a reason. Mike Tyson ain't going to be doing smooth, great stuff. He's going to be doing clumsy-looking stuff. He sure is not. He's going to be doing clumsy-looking stuff. I mean, some of the stuff might be able to be carried, and some of it may not. But it's, it's you know, it's it's not about that. It's about if it works to get attention on the product, if it works to help ratings. And, and it's not even r ratings, although ratings are certainly a, a part of it. It's more expanding the name of the brand i mean the reality is there's a lot of wrestling fans who who know who aew is but in the general public it's really not a very well-known name when people think of wrestling it's wwe and it's gonna you know it's gonna take a long long time for aew to be established to where people think of them like that and one of the things that you do to do this is do things that people outside of wrestling will talk about so in this case you know you got all the mma people talking about it because you had tyson and Vitor belford and um, rashad evans and henry cejudo all on the show tonight and you know i mean will that will the ratings be any higher this week because of it i mean you know probably a little i mean i think i i would assume the ratings will be will be up i'd be very disappointed for them, if it wasn't because, number one, you're coming off a pay-per-view, and AEW has always had a bigger number coming off the pay-per-view. Number two, you pushed that you had Tyson on the show all week, and you saved it for the final segment. So, you know, for those reasons, they should have a real strong number. It, they may not, but the idea is, is you know, this is, this is brand building, which is a process that, you know, you, and especially in a very fragmented uh, media era, where it's very hard to build a brand, you know, unless you use established names. And Tyson is an established media star. So, I mean, it, it makes all the sense in the world. It may not be the prettiest wrestling. And, um, you know, if Tyson does something, however they do the thing with Tyson and Jericho, you know, which I would presume should be on the next pay-per-view, which isn't until September. That's a long way off to, to keep this thing going. Um, I don't know if they can... If that's the plan, I mean, normally that would make sense to be the plan as you build it something up for the next pay-per-view. Um, but boy, it's you got to keep it going for that many months. And Tyson doesn't come cheap, obviously. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I mean, I would hope that it's not over. I mean, that would be, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it makes no sense. I would be very do. surprised, but. Yeah, I would be. No, I can't. can't. They're not going to be doing something like that just for like a one shot pop and then not even follow up when you had that, especially since Jericho cut promos on it afterwards and everything. And um, they're taping tomorrow. So he's there. So hopefully they have, they have my next week's show as well. I don't know that to be the case, but it would make sense. And, uh, you know, build for, build for something. Well, we got the Detroit Free Press. We got The Age. We got Yahoo Sports Canada. We got ESPN among the outlets that covered it here tonight. So it did get mainstream publicity. Yeah, but it did it get did it get on Sports Center? The Sun. I don't know if it was on Sports Center or not. I mean, I mean, websites of newspapers not a big deal. Wrestling's in. It's like this is not an era where wrestling's not in that. ESPN has wrestling stories every single day, so that's not and, and AEW stories all the time. So that's not any. Um, if it's on Sports Center and they make a big deal of it, that's something. Being on the ESPN website doesn't mean anything. Being on a newspaper website doesn't really mean anything that much anymore. It's um, if you're on Entertainment Tonight, or, or you know, if you're on like a, a news show or a sports show. But Sports Center is the key, really, because that's the one, um, you know, or an entertainment show or something like that. That, and they they put your name out there. I mean, that's that's the kind of publicity that you're looking for, you know. Perhaps a USA Today, um, but they cover wrestling all the time, too, so that's not really a unique thing either. Um, I mean, being all over the MMA world is a new audience, but that's it's something. It's something. It's not, it's not gigantic. It's really, honestly, it's just, you know, 
and I haven't watched Sports Center tonight. If you're if if they got it in Sports Center, then that builds the brand because Sports Center's talking about it, and that's the you know or, or or another show on television that has you know entertainment news show that has that kind of a, a reach. You know, those would be what you're really looking for. I mean, of course, ESPN's going to cover it, but ESPN's going to cover their you know ESPN is going to cover anything that they do for the most part. So that's that's not that big of a deal. It's like Sports Illustrated or whatever. You know, in the old days, that would be great if it was Sports Illustrated magazine. Today, that magazine doesn't even mean anything, and the website covers wrestling every week anyway. We had the Inner Circle celebration. They've got cheerleaders. Vicky Guerrero comes out to do the introduction. Sammy comes out on did crutches. You, did, did you know? Do you know? You know, Vicky Guerrero used to be a cheerleader. Did you know that? I know that now. Yeah, she was a cheerleader for the um, El Paso. Um, I believe it was their their base, the baseball team in El Paso. Uh, way back, I mean, we're probably going back, you know, a good at least tw- 25 years, maybe more. Um, you know, I think that when she was like about 19 or 20, 21 in that range. So, so when she was doing the cheerleading, it's like, ah, she knows how to do this stuff because she was, you know, that's her background. Jared goes out for the pep rally. He starts throwing t shirts into the crowd, saying, oh, we got these for all of you guys. Printing error. So they played that. Storyline, and, and there the were show. people throwing the t-shirts back at him. They're too, throwing back him back, and he's furious. And they're all giving each other these wacky gifts. And Jericho has a scooter for Sammy. No more shitty crutches. He's got headphones for Ortiz because his head's still ringing from the bell on the Saturday pay per view. Hager starts reading this poem, and then he turns into a raging wild man, threatening to go to the elite's houses and do unspeakable do, doing things. Doing the Liam Neeson, li- Liam Neeson line. And finally, he, he, was, he, he was quoting Liam Neeson from from I forget the movie now, but uh, that was where that line came. That line came from. So finally, Jericho says, "What I really want is I want Mike Tyson's head on a platter." He says, "I have not forgotten what Tyson did to me on January 11, 2010, on a Monday night. He turned on me. He turned traitor on me. Every single day of my life since that day, I have been dreaming." Of getting my hands on his fat head. I want his head on a platter. Sammy says, well, I, I couldn't bring you his head on a platter. I got you a cheese platter. They start arguing about the cheese platter. Somebody ate all the food. Out comes Mike Tyson and his posse, which includes Henry Cejudo, Rashad Evans, Vitor Belfort. Nobody. There's three announcers. Not one person mentioned Rashad Evans just standing there. Dude. I had to go back because I recognized Vitor and Henry Cejudo. I recognized Rashad immediately. I didn't. I was going like... He grew his hair out. Well, he's got the braids, but it's just yeah. same Rashad. Yeah, no, I recognized well, I recognized him when I when I looked for him, but I was, I was, at first I was just like, oh, it's a bunch of Tyson's buddies, and then, huh, oh, there's no, Henry I, Cejudo I, and Vitor. Yeah, no, I saw Rashad, and it's just like, you know, somebody say something, and, and, and there's three announcers, and... None of them. I mean, okay, I can get none of them recognizing him in theory, okay, because he looked different. But here's the thing. Shouldn't they know ahead of time who it is? Oh, well, we're dealing do- with Mike Tyson here, so maybe just... No, they, 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 they're, hired, they're hired because he's hired because he's Rashad Evans to be in this thing. So the announcer's... Somebody should have told the announcers, and clearly, with with three announcers not knowing, that means that none of the three were told. Because we could, I could, I could accept that one of the three could forget. I could not accept that two of the three would forget. Um, but all three of the three, there's no way. So nobody told them. Some, so that's it's not. This is not on the announcers. I mean, if you're a super MMA fan, I mean, and, and Excalibur did in fact apologize for not recognizing him, but. He shouldn't have had to recognize him. He should have been told. These are, you know, the guys and then the other guy's Gooch, you know, who's um just he's one of Mike Tyson's friends, the guy with the the, the white guy with the face paint. No, oh, that guy. That guy ruined the whole segment for me practically. So they they go out there and and Jericho tells Tyson, I've been dreaming of this moment for 10 years. You turned on me. You told me I could trust you. And then you turned on me and knocked me out. And Tyson's being all wacky. He's just jumping around. He says, you're a sucker. You deserve that. You stole the championship. And Jericho when, when, says... When, when was this? I, I, I don't know what Tyson's talking about. 
<laughs> he says, I'm going to give, uh, Jericho says, you're going to give Tyson one chance. I'm going to demand an apology. Tell your thugs to shut up. You got one chance to apologize or I'll knock you the hell out. And Tyson, oh, dude, this guy, he tries to tear his shirt off, but he can't. And like was, time that... stands still. Oh, that was and unbelievable. And he's tearing. And it, like, it looks like Jericho's just trying so hard not to laugh at this poor guy. And then when he gets it half off, he just starts flexing and mugging in front of Jericho. I don't even know what he's doing. And finally, he shoves Jericho. Jericho shoves him. So that's the total copy of the Steve Austin. Oh, it was exactly like it. And there's yeah. this giant brawl. All the wrestlers hit the ring to tear everybody apart. This gooch fella is just like... He's trying to steal the spotlight. Like, He's not what is signed. going on with this guy? Freaking Gooch. Dude! Gooch is... Gooch. And this why? is not your segment, Gooch. <laughs> and Just get thing. out of the way. Why is the guy wearing freaking face paint? I don't know. I couldn't take he's, my eyes off this guy, and, I, and he's the last guy I should have been watching in this segment. I mean, the whole thing. The whole thing is, is that it's like it's like Mike Tyson is the one that you know to, that you're supposed to notice, and then you're sort of I'm, I'm supposed to kind of notice Henry Cejudo and the other two guys. <laughs> you're supposed to notice that they're there with Tyson, but that's it. But, then but, you're supposed to be watching Tyson, and you're supposed to be watching Jericho. Now, the one thing I can say with, with, with Rashad and the other guy and, and, and Cejudo and Vitor is that they did their job right in the sense they were there, but they never mugged for the camera. They never got in Tyson's way. Whereas this freaking Gooch guy, he's all over the place. He's all over the place. He looked like he was drunk. He's stumbling around. It's like, what? man, let get Hager on that guy. So they yeah. have this big brawl, and the show ends with Jericho vowing to get Tyson. Hey, listen, it wasn't boring. I can tell you that much right now. It was definitely not boring. And I am intrigued to see where this goes. But I hope that Tyson shows up without Gooch next time. Uh, we may not be so lucky. I think Gooch might be part of the angle. Oh. Well, maybe they can make something of it. Because if, if, if Hager gets a hold of this guy and gives him a pummeling, then maybe we're talking. Yeah, but he won't know how to sell. Hager will make him sell, Dave. I don't think we have to worry about that. I don't know about this. He's, he's going to sell. He's going to sell for Hager, Dave, one way or the other. I don't know about this. He, he may Ask not Ambrose. Ask Moxley. He'll tell you. You think he was kidding when he said that guy hit him harder than he's ever been hit in his life? I believe every I, I remember, word I remember, that he said. I, I remember some guys used to tell me about how Hager doesn't know his own strength. And when he would put guys in, in holds... That uh, the holds would hurt. Yeah, I do remember those stories. All right. Well, the Gooch is going to sell, okay? Hanger gets a hold of him. 